Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session on uh, neurology. Now, with this uh, brief background of neurophysiology and neuroanatomy, let us start with the intracerebral bleed. Okay. So, one of the most important uh, uh, type of intracerebral bleed is called as extradural hemorrhage. That means the hemorrhage is outside the dura, but within the skull, okay, or within the cranium. Okay. Called extradural hemorrhage, which you can see the picture here. So it's between the meninges and the bone. So, what would be a common history? The patient would have a history of trauma to head or some road traffic accident. Now, what is the structure which is running in the extradural space? Is the middle meningeal artery. Okay, middle meningeal artery is a branch of the external carotid artery. Now, as because it's an arterial blade, the uh, a patient will have. Uh, the rapid onset of symptom because of the bleeding so the patient will come with the loss of consciousness okay so that could be two uh, separate phases of this event uh, initially patient would have loss of consciousness subsequently he may regain conscious and he may deteriorate later so this is called as lucid interval so patient will present uh, with confusion, he become aggressive, he become subsequently drowsy. Okay, so this period of uh, uh, or the period of delayed deterioration later on is called as lucid interval. The best investigation and emergency would be a uh, plain CT of the brain. How do we manage this extradural hemorrhage? The patient will require stabilization of the vitals and surgical intervention uh, to remove the clot. The second would be subdural hemorrhage. Here, the bleeding is under the dura, that is between the dura and the arachnoid. So, most commonly, again, uh, it's due to trauma. Uh, the trauma may, could be trivial. Uh, uh, it is more common in elderly, where the space between the dura and the arachnoid is uh, slightly uh, uh, bigger than that in the younger individuals. The patient may be alcoholic, may have uh, may have a history of falls. So, the initial uh, fall may be minor and might have forgotten. Here, the bleeding is from the veins. We have seen the uh, dural sinuses and emissary veins. Okay, so those are the veins which are affected here in subdural hemorrhage. And the patient would present with headache, uh, fluctuating consciousness. Patient have increased blood uh, intracranial pressure, which would where the patient may have headache along with vomiting, systolic hypertension. Again, the patient would require neurosurgical review and surgery. The investigation here would begin CT brain. Here we have the two uh, important differential. Okay, what happens in extra dural hemorrhage, which is an arterial bleed, is that the bleed is between the skull and or the cranium and the dura. So, uh, but the dura is attached to the skull at the sutures. Okay, that's why you have an lemon shaped bleed. Whereas in the subdural hemorrhage, it's a venous bleed. Okay, so it's the bleed is beneath the dura mater. So we have a crescent-shaped uh, bleeding. So treatment would be neurosurgical, barrel hole. So remember, subdural hemorrhage is much more common in alcoholics and elderly person compared uh, to uh, extradural hemorrhage. Next, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Here, the bleeding is in the subarachnoid space, and we already know from our anatomy that subarachnoid space is contains CSF. So most of the time, it's due to rupture of the uh, aneurysms. We know the arteries are all traveling in the subarachnoid space before they enter into the brain. So the most common is a rupture of berry aneurysm, which is a common association in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. It could be due to a arterial venous malformation, trauma, could be due to tumors. The best investigation would be again CT brain, but remember, CT brain may be negative in 5% of the cases. Okay, so what would be the next step? Suppose you're suspecting a subarachnoid hemorrhage, and the CT brain initially shows uh, does not show any hemorrhage, but you have a strong clinical suspicion of subarachnoid hemorrhage, then we need to do a lumbar puncture and see the CSF. Okay, the CSF, which is obtained after a subarachnoid hemorrhage, if you keep for 6 to 12 hours, then you find what's called xanthochromia. Okay, so xanthochrome is yellowish color in the CSF due to, due to hemolysis, which is occurring in the CSF. So the way, best way to prove uh, would be doing a cerebral angiogram, which would show the extravasation of the uh, blood at the site of damage to the arteries. Complication of subarachnoid hemorrhage, although ruptured berinderism might bleed again, re-bleeding, which is quite common, up to 48 hours. 
and because the CSF is filled with blood, you now CSF flow is is uh, obstructed or restricted. That results in hydrocephalus. Okay, that is enlargement of the ventricles. So the lateral ventricle, third ventricle may get enlarged. Sometimes when there is a blood within the uh, CSF, uh, the the arteries which are there in the CSF it may irritate those arteries causing vasospasm which is a later complication after a week's time how do you manage uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage it requires urgent neurosurgery uh, referral uh, for and this patient would have high blood pressure so controlling blood pressure would be uh, with calcium channel blockers such as mimi nemodipine and the nemodipine has been found to decrease the severity of neurological deficit and uh, uh, neurosurgery would include clipping of these aneurysms okay, or coiling of this aneurysm based on the morphology of the aneurysm. So there are two options, either neurosurgical or interventional uh, neurologist or uh, radiologist. Uh, it is up to the treating team to decide what is the best intervention. But uh, for an exam, remember that uh, there are some specific ECG changes when you have increased intracranial pressure, uh, which include deep symmetrical T wave inversion with prolongation of the QT interval. Okay, so this is the uh, type of ECG changes which we see in intracranial bleeds. Here we have a CT image of a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage. You can see these uh, sub um, subarachnoid spaces filled with blood. Okay, you can see the blood. Okay, unlike the extradural or subdural hemorrhage, we are not going to see blood uh, in the uh, in the periphery. It will be in the subarachnoid spaces. Okay, sometimes it may not be uh, visible as well. 